everyone. Welcome to so stream. So yeah, 500 subscribers, except not 500 anymore. Since I made that announcement, um, we actually have exceeded 600 now. I have no Ooh. idea how that happened, but thank you so much. And welcome to your bonus so stream. Uh, obviously, I am Tara. Um, the host of this virtual sewing circle. Uh, Lawrence is on the helm, so be nice to each other. Remember, you will get blocked because we've had to do it now officially if you make lewd comments. So please keep it clean for all of our friends who are under age. Thank you very much. Um, and yeah, today is just going to be an open Q&A session. You can ask me any questions that you like. It can be about vintage. It can be about lifestyle. It can be about sewing. It can be about crafting. It's up to you. This is your bonus. So I am leaving it open for you today. Um, and why don't we all start by introducing ourselves? Tell me who you are. Tell me what you're crafting today. And uh, maybe tell me what your favorite thing to craft is. And um, I will start. So again, I'm Tara, the hashtag crafty vintage lady. And I love sewing. I also love baking. And today I am working on a sore neglected apron string. Um, and so this is uh, for my 16th century apron. I'm just doing the hand stitch work on it before I attach it to the apron itself. And that's really all I'm going to be doing while we chat today. So welcome everyone. Who we got? We have in the house uh, Mindy and Cassio Pear. At least those are the folks that have introduce themselves, but we do have some others watching as well. So like Tara said, just get in touch on the live chat. Yes. Hello, Mindy. And hello, Cassiopeia. As well as Mindy, we have Mandy. Oh, and Mandy. Hey there. So yeah, send me your questions. Let me know what it is that you would like to know about really anything pertaining to me or about our sew circle or anything that's on your mind today. I would love to hear all about it. Have we got anything come in yet today? Yeah, it looks like uh, Mindy likes to crotchet specifically. Crochet. Crochet. <laughs> I'm from England. We don't you actually... say crotchet? Well, no, we probably don't. <laughs> and in fact, we do get French pronunciations closer to French usually. Uh, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes you like to butcher things too in the UK. We play games of croquette. Crockett. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right, great. Well, I like the idea of crocheting. I know I've tried it before, but I don't think I'm very well versed in it. So maybe I'm going to have to learn it at some point, just like I'm going to have to learn knitting because it sounds like that's a popular choice for lots of people who follow me as well. What else we got? Uh, Cassiopeia says, I am a procrastinator with many ideas and half projects. Today, I was rereading the Harry Potter books until this notification came up. Aha, uh -huh. I love the Harry Potter books. But you know what? Fun fact. Um, so while all of my friends in college were reading Harry Potter and who were going to, you know, the midnight um, book premieres and things like that, I really just didn't have time to read extra stuff uh, because as a theater person, you go and you are involved in lots of shows. So I waited because I had heard from everyone that I know that the books were amazing. Um, I waited and as a gift to myself for getting my master's degree, I bought myself the entire series and I read it in what, Lawrence? Two months? Probably two months. It didn't take very long. I was hooked the entire time. So now I am a lifelong fan, but it took a really long time for me to get there, much longer than all of the rest of my friends. Yeah, I mean, you did it faster than me. Um, although I did read all of the Harry Potter movies in two weeks so <laughs> so yeah uh i i am a really big fan uh lawrence is a fan of the films at least i don't know if you did you actually ever read the book i still end? haven't no i'm i'm such a terrible englishman i just haven't gotten around to it and here we have friends who uh, you know visit or at least one of the two of them they're married um visits the uk constantly and they have like first editions of both the british and the american sets and lawrence hasn't read any of them for shame <laughs> for shame. We All have, right, what have we got? We have some more comments. This, this one comes from Annette, who is working on mounting a diamond painting for framing. Oh, how cool. I would love to know what that entails. Um, when we say diamond painting, do we mean a diamond shape painting? Are there diamonds encrusted in it? I'm, I'm unfamiliar with the term, so please explain. Same. And Sue is a knitter, specifically. All right. I like knitting. Uh, at least I like what it looks like when it's finished. I would like to try at some point. 
We have, uh, forgive me if I mispronounce, we have Ajina on the line um, who's just jumped on. And Sue also says, uh, would you use an elastic thread to create a button tab or have you ever used it? You can use an elastic thread um, to create a button tab. I would honestly just suggest getting maybe um, a quarter inch or an eighth inch, just elastic. Um, the thread, I feel like the thread would maybe break a lot easier, but it is elastic. So it might, you know, last longer than say, if you used traditional thread. No, my vote would be definitely for like finding some actual elastic and uh, doing it that way. But what do I know? I, mm, it's a really good question. I don't really know what I know. Um, so that's, that's where I would go with that. But um, you tell me what, first off, what the project is, because it sounds like you're just attaching buttons, but I could be wrong. And secondly, um, like where on the garment you're thinking about attaching the buttons, because that can make a difference too. If it pulls too much, then definitely going for like traditional elastic would be better. In fact, Sue does follow up by saying, I am sewing on a button as sweater top closure, figuring whether elastic thread would work. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, I think if it's a closure, then, uh, and at the top of the neck, is that what you said, Lawrence? Like the neckline? Yes. Uh, well, I think uh, sewing on button as sweater top, yeah, closure. Um, if it's just going to be the one, like you're almost doing like a keyhole or something, then I think that would be fine, especially if, if it's like a, a thicker weight um, of elastic thread. But if you're doing multiple buttons or if they're pulling in a place like on the bust, I'd go with traditional elastic. Uh, Cassie Opea says uh, that she started reading the books after book five was released. Hates bandwagons, but this is a lifestyle. It is. Slytherin for life. Yeah, you know, I'm I'm Slytherin. No, you're I'm, not. I determine this. I, that sorting hat thing that you go to. That's Which is the official Harry Potter website, by the way. It's Pottermore. It's lies. And only a Slytherin would say what I just said. So That's I'm absolutely untrue. Is because it? common um, misconception holds that you are some kind of caricature of all the different um, parts of a personality. Just like with all kinds of other common misconceptions about caricaturization, but actually you are allowed to have personality traits of the other personalities that are generally represented in each of the four different houses. I'm just rebelling. Because, Thank you very much. Well, everybody puts me in the, the ha Harry Potter's house. Yes, so. he is a Gryffindor. And by the way, Pottermore sorted him as a Gryffindor. So he is no, a Gryffindor, my friends. No, no, I'm too rebellious for that, as you very well know. <sighs> Okay, so hands up, maybe virtual hands up. You can't do this. If um, you've been rebellious, but you're not a Slytherin before. This is unbelievable. <laughs> Any other questions while we wait? <laughs> uh, true, yeah, let's have a look. It doesn't look like it. Keep your questions coming. In fact, we do. Uh, in fact, Sue just asked, do we get to see your Halloween costumes? FYI, uh, Blizzard, what's this? Blizzard Swatch could Chicago Halloween. I think that means it's, uh, are we expecting a blizzard? Oh yeah, next weekend. I did see that on the news yesterday, but I'm not, I haven't followed up with it. So I'm not really sure if that was real or if it was sensationalist or what. So um, we'll all keep you posted. Don't worry, I'll be back on Wednesday to let you know whether or not we're sitting snow. Um, and in terms of the Halloween costume, that is a great question. And um, if you were following my stories, I'm sorry, I haven't really been posting a lot in the last couple of days, but I've been very busy. Um, because I have now gathered the supplies for, our, um, well, for the kimono parts, is, at least, of our um, Halloween costumes. And I have also made my mock-up. I know that a lot of you guys are really interested in mock-ups and their applications. So let me take you on the journey of the mock-up for this specific pro um, project. So um, this is my mock-up for the Halloween kimonos that I'm making. And astoundingly, they fit both of us. What I did is I took that pattern, which if you were here on Wednesday, then you saw I had that pattern that I had taped up and I transferred it onto some craft paper. And then from there, I made my own measurements and adapted that pattern to the look and the feel and my own measurements of what I think that kimono should look like. And what I came up with was basically this 
sort of kimono looking thing. And it only has one sleeve, but that's because I'm still trying to figure out what the shape of the sleeve should look like. Cause it doesn't look like a traditional kimono in the pictures um, of the ABBA costume. Instead, it's a little more campy. So what I did is I shortened it first off. And I think what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm also going to make this curve a lot more pronounced. So this mock-up is not quite finished, but what was really fun is I got to make the mock-up at um, a sewing studio here in um, Chicago called Sew Anastasia as part of her Halloween um, party. So I went over there and I hung out with some people and we sewed and we chatted and then she was kind enough to fit it for me. So for the first time since I actually worked in a studio of any kind, um, like professionally, I was not standing in front of my own mirror, humming and hawing and pinching at myself and hoping that I was getting measurements right because I had another person to do it with me. So thankfully this is now in the next stage. And as soon as I'm finished with the mock-up, then I can just stitch together the actual kimonos and it should only take me probably a couple hours per kimono. So that's really exciting. I'm, I'm into the next stage now. Now, Lawrence and I still have to find the rest of the pieces of the costume. So I don't know if it's gonna come together by um, October 31st or not, but that's okay, because our party is not till the second. So you might see me in Wednesday in costume, you might not, but if not, then I promise I will at least show it to you, don't worry. Any uh, other questions? Yeah, I've got some Slytherin solidarity here. Cassiopeia's husband claims to be in Slytherin too, although his knowledge of the wizarding world firmly places him as a muggle married to a witch. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, no, that's not you. You you definitely have some magic in you. Really? My love, yes. I I'm a bit of a muggle. Uh, are I you? I don't I think you are. Cassiope is a Ravenclaw herself, and uh, there are, Mandy and uh, Gina say they've not been sorted yet, but, uh, but where was it? I missed it. Mindy uh, is a Hufflepuff. Okay. Well, welcome to the group. Don't worry, there's no judgment here. Um, Hufflepuffs are loved just like anyone else. Um, so I'm glad to have you with us today. I know that sometimes, you know, y'all tend to get a little bit hated on and I am not here for that. So you will be happy to know that. Um, what else we got? Um, so Annette, uh, responding to the uh, question about diamond painting, uh, uses resin dots placed on a sticky canvas. The dots, mm. which are diamonds, are faceted so that they reflect light and shine like diamonds. How cool. Well, you're definitely going to have to use the hashtag Crafty Vintage Lady to show us that. Um, I do typically give a shout out to one of y'all um, during the week. Uh, whenever I have a so stream, but I figure this is our bonus since we have more subscribers now than ever before. So you all are the stars today. I am not going to call out one specific uh, follower this time around because everybody is a crafter. But like I said, every Wednesday, I try to shout out at least one of you. So be using the hashtag on any social media, crafty vintage lady, all one word. And then I will hopefully be able to see your stuff and comment on it and like it. And then we will have one of you represented every week um, for our virtual sewing circle. What else we got, Lawrence? Well, this seems to fit in with my experience with the sorting hat. Uh, so Cassiopeia was first sorted into Ravenclaw, but the new engine put her in Hufflepuff. Uh, hmm. They let her stay in Ravenclaw, which suggests you can sort of cross over between two different, or two or three different ones. Right? When they changed the website, they did give you the uh, option to stay in your old house if you wanted, but I don't think that you ever got sorted in the old website, so. If I, I don't I, think you I, get to choose. I would have been Slytherin without question. Without question. He really isn't a Slytherin. He he seriously is, you know, someone who um, is very heroic in his actions and will stick up for the little guy and does does very yeah. Gryffindor esque things, even though he really wants you to believe that he doesn't. Well, but underneath it all, I am sort of a vile, monstrous. Entity. See, he doesn't even know what a Slytherin represents. So oh, it's I've, it's unbelievable. I've seen the blonde boy. Whatever his name. What's his name? Listen to him. I can't remember his name. <sighs> Poor Draco. That's it, Draco Malfoy. So it came to me there after I Googled it. 
Unbelievable. What else have we got for comments before I jump across the table and show you what a Slytherin actually is like? Mandy says uh, that she finds beading very relaxing. Ooh, beading. So what kind of beading do you do, Mandy? Do you um, do bead work like our friend Donna, I believe, um, has shared with me a few um, different like beading jewelries that she does? Or are you more of someone who like does bead work on fabric, which I am very keen to try. It's been a, a number of years since I actually um, did that. I used to do a little bit of finishing work um, when I worked in the theater. And I would always really like beading work too. Um, I also made my sister um, her veil. I actually took my mother's old veil from her wedding and then uh, rehashed it into a new one and it had a little bit of beadwork in there as well. But I haven't done it since she got married, I think that was the last time. So it's been a few years here yet since that happened. So tell me, what kind of beadwork do you do? And while, while we're waiting for that, Al Sue uh, says, um, I knit with beads to make 1920s beaded purses. Oh, cool. Oh, I love those. I've always loved the 1920s uh, beaded purse look. They're so, like, the, the actual vintage ones, though, are so expensive. And unlike most things, which seem to be um, blowing up right now in price, uh, vintage-wise, the, those beaded purses are one of the only items that I can think of that has truly always been way too expensive and out of my budget for me um, since I knew, learned of their existence when I was, you know, probably a preteen or something. I thought um, you had one. Like, I do have a, it's a reproduction. It's not actually real okay. uh, vintage, but I do have one and it keeps all of my um, notions in it <laughs> because, you know, I, I might actually be a caricature of someone who crafts after all. I don't know. But yeah. So I do have one. It's just not real, unfortunately. Um, so Cassie Opea was at a town Halloween party last night with a house elf costume. That's what she was wearing. And her Yay. husband was dressed as Uncle Festa. Right? Yeah, I think I saw the pictures of you guys uh, playing around with those last week. So congratulations on finishing those costumes. <laughs> But the judges, <laughs> right, at this contest gave them second place <gasps> as the Adams family, like the two of them together. Oh, weird. Yeah. Maybe right. they just got confused. I don't know. Hey, I mean, you get a silver medal. It, it... <laughs> That's still good. Yeah. Congratulations on that, too. It's an achievement that I have yet to uh, possess as a Halloween costume uh, winner. So there we are. Uh, and Mandy says, I'm not as good as, quote, Donna, uh, but I did beat jewelry. Very cool. I would love to see it. Use the hashtag. I'm telling you. It would be great. We got any more questions? No, I caught up. I somehow. I oh. kept up, I should say. Well, like I said, you can ask about anything today. This is your stream. So I am happy to oblige you with any requests that you like, as long as, of course, we keep a PG, my friends. Um, and in the meantime, I am getting to the end of my thread, but I am certainly not getting to the end of this quite atrocious looking thing. <laughs> um, and you can see my stitch work isn't terrible, but it is, it's just so wrinkly because it was at the bottom of my sewing bag for so long. And um, I, I do not recommend that you neglect your projects this way. If you're not going to work on them for a while, please at least fold them, unlike yours truly. Um, do a little bit better than than I do. Uh, what was that meme that was going around for a while? Um, don't be like Tara. Yeah, don't be like me. Was that going around? I think so, or not like me personally, but like whoever it is that wasn't doing the right thing, right? I see. Yeah. Um, so. And Mindy has a question. Do you ever sew on a machine. I do. Um, in fact, just a few weeks ago, we had our first ever So Long Sunday, and that was all machine-based, so we all made slips, if uh, you joined me, and you can actually still view that as many times as you like if you are a patron of $5 or more of Old Fashioned AF, so you can always go to patreon.com slash oldfashioned underscore AF, um, become a patron, and then you can see that for So Long Sunday. But we will have others. And um, the next one, I believe, I scheduled for November 17th. So you are more than welcome to attend, and you will probably see me on a machine again that day, at least. I'm actually going between two different projects. Maybe we can do a poll today. I'm thinking either we make a beret, 
because I I know that Tartan Tabby, I'm not sure if she's with us today or not, but um, she had suggested that we make a pumpkin beret, which I think is a fabulous idea. And I, I'm always in the mood for more berets. I only have a white one right now, but I would absolutely love to have a different colored one. Um, or we might make a bag like a pouch of some sort. So maybe a coin purse or maybe a um, grocery bag, something like that. So whichever one you would most prefer to make along with me on November 17th, please let me know in the comment box and I will tally that up and we will try and figure out which one our next so Along Sunday will be. And by the way, if you are new here, So Along Sundays are free. You don't have to be a patron for the So Along Sunday itself. It's just to rewatch them um, that I uh, ask that you become a patron because then you can go back and forth and you can also get personal um, information from me if you like. So if you have trouble or you're struggling with a specific area of your work, then I can um, take a look at the comments on Patreon and I can continue to support you in that way after our So Long Sunday is done. So please consider becoming a patron and then you will be able to see lots more of me sewing on a machine in the future. You might see it on a um, sew stream as well. But yes, I do sew on a machine. Any other questions? Uh, Mindy says, my mother is a fan, not my mother, uh, Mindy's mother, <laughs> is a fantastic seamstress and made a lot of my dresses growing up. Uh, she also made my prom dress and my wedding dress and all my bridesmaids dresses. Oh, that's amazing. I would have loved to grow up with a mom who could sew well. Um, I'm, I'm not sure, honestly, to this day, if my mom can sew or not. I know that she has quilting stuff that she would always like to make, but she she's never actually gotten any of it out. And to my knowledge, she's never actually used it around me. So I could not tell you whether she sews or not. What I do know is that my grandmother did sew for most of my growing up. And I did ask her to help me with a prom dress, but I think I got so busy in high school that I just didn't have time to follow up on that. And so I never actually had my own prom dress made. But a lot of the people in my family do quilting and, and that sort of thing. So it, it kind of runs in my family a little bit too. Yeah. Uh, we've got some good questions coming in right now. Uh, this one is from Sue. What about 1940s turbans to sew? I love that idea. And I actually already have that in my, um, in my little bucket of different content ideas. So that one will probably be coming during a winter so long Sunday in the future. But yes, a turban or at the very least, um, just because I don't want them to be more than an hour or so. I think that actually our first one was maybe a little long. So I'm going to make these so long Sundays perhaps a little bit shorter. It might be fun to show you maybe some historic um, hand sewing as well. And I was thinking that maybe making a... Um, a handkerchief of some sort or like uh, a hair scarf would be a really good way to showcase how to do um, a couple of really exciting stitches or maybe doing some um, some basic embroidery, that sort of thing. So so I'm thinking about things in the future and if not a head scarf, certainly um, a head kerchief is in our future, I believe. Um, yeah. Uh, Cassiopeia's Grams was a seamstress years ago. Uh, she made her first wedding dress. Seems like we've got quite a few forebears here who uh, who were good at the old seamstressing. You know, I think that that's honestly just a part of the female experience in general, which is, that's not to say that it's not part of the male experience either. Um, I think, you know, it is important to understand that people in general, male or female, have been making clothes for one another since the beginning of time. But I do find it fascinating that, you know, most people have a female person in their life who at some stage either worked in the garment in industry or has made clothing for themselves. And so I'm very interested always to explore the history of um, people and of the way that they have interacted with clothing um, and made clothing in the past. Here's a good question. This comes from Samantha. Who taught you how to sew? Was it YouTube? <laughs> so, um, no, not really. Um, I, I did not start really sewing 
um, with the exception of like some little things, um, you know, like home ec and the like, um, which I guess schools don't have anymore. But nevertheless, that's where I really was like first taught, um, except until I got to college, basically. So I um, have an undergraduate degree in theater. And as part of that, and I'm sorry for the siren, we live in a city, it happens sometimes. Um, but as part of my theatrical training, we had to do um, some backstage work and some construction work for costumes for our theater department. And I absolutely fell in love with it. But the problem was that that was really the first time that I had sewn in any kind of capacity outside of, again, like stitching on a button here and there, or like making stuffed animals for myself in middle school, right? Um, so I really was kind of far behind and I ended up taking some private lessons as well from um, a former theater um, seamstress and really the rest is history. So I, I basically got a little bit of traditional training and anything that I need to fill in the gaps with, I get from books. Sometimes I get it from YouTube. Sometimes I get it from blogs. Sometimes I get it from, you know, whenever I can find it, I get it from primary source um, materials as well. So it's really nice to look at very old books to try and get um, a handle on how to hand stitch things, that sort of thing. Um, but yeah, mostly, mostly self-taught, but my basis is in um, traditional learning. Just another gentle reminder from Sue uh, to learn the history of it by reading The Lost Art of the Dress, or of Dress. Yes, I know. I'm, I'm still, <laughs> I'm still uh, looking into that book, and I am really excited to read it. It's just, I got so much going on right now outside of it that it will, I, you can guarantee that it will be um, on my reading list for a while before I actually get the chance to read it. But I, I definitely have it on my reading list. I think it sounds like a really interesting book. Um, and I look forward to reading it at some point in the future. Samantha and Donna add to the uh, comments around uh, folks whose moms, grandmoms uh, sewed clothes. Uh, Samantha says, my grandma made a lot of her kids clothing. And my mom sewed, or uh, this is Donna, my mom sewed almost all of our clothes. She would make them for my sister and then adjust them for me once sis grew out of them. Yeah, I, I think that that kind of thing used to happen to me as well. Um, I don't know about people making our clothes and then handing them down and altering them, but I know that certainly a fair few used clothes got handed down to us. And sometimes my grandmother would have to alter them in terms of, you know, height or what have you um, in order for us to be able to wear them multiple uses over the ages. We are down to two minutes remaining. And wow, our, that our, went really it quickly. It did go very, very fast. Our cat slept throughout the entire thing. That's insane. Do we have another question that I can answer before we leave? Uh, keep your questions coming in because we will have about a minute and 30 here to uh, answer any others or read out any others, any other comments that is. So nothing at this point? We're all caught up? I think I'm all caught up. All right, great. Well, um, I can tell you that our newest special offer for Patreon um, is officially open. And what I'm going to start doing really soon is a series, probably a video series, but I haven't decided exactly how I'm going to do it yet, um, that coordinates with Lost in the Pond, which is our other channel. Um, and it will talk about some of the history and the differences between um, American and British traditional foods when it comes to specific holidays. So of course in the UK, they don't have Thanksgiving, but Lawrence is going to try a bunch of Thanksgiving foods. And I thought that it would be a really great idea for me to do a series on those Thanksgiving foods and their traditions and that sort of thing. So um, as part of all of this, from now until November 15th, if you become a patron um, of $5 or more, then I will send you one of my recipe cards. I'm going to design it myself. It's going to look very kind of fun, vintage-y, um, but it will have a recipe um, that coordinates with the schedule of the different types of recipes that we are going to explore in our Lost in the Pond series um, and on Old Fashioned AF. So again, you can go to patreon.com slash old fashioned underscore AF to become a patron if you haven't already. And I very much look forward to sending you that recipe card. We have time for one final question. This comes from Sue. Uh, did you say that you would show hand rolled hens? 
Um, you know, that actually was exactly what I was thinking of. So um, very astute. I did not say hand rolled sim seams out loud, but I would absolutely love to show you guys some hand rolling and him um, again, something. It might be a headscarf. It might be something else. Um, and that's where we will conclude this, I suppose. So be looking out for that because um, I am, that's actually one of my very favorite stitches to do. And when I was um, a costume interpreter, <laughs> literally that would be what I did all day some days, especially when it was rainy. So yes, I would love to show you um, some rolled hems. All right, well, that is time. We are one minute past the half hour. Okay, well, thank you very much again for joining me on your so stream. let's be real. Uh, 500 subscribers, thank you, thank you, thank you. At some stage in the near future, I am gonna start making videos. Will it be about food? Will it be about vintage lifestyle? Will it be about um, crafting? We'll see and be looking forward to that. And hopefully I will see you on Patreon as well before our next So Long Sunday. So have a good rest of your weekend, folks. We have a few hours left still to enjoy it. And uh, I will see you on Wednesday at 8 p.m. Central. Bye. Bye.